church, the church must sing. Like a mighty wind, Jesus breathed with thee. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In me. Like a mighty, like a, like a mighty, la, 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 Lord, we surrender this morning. I surrender. Yeah, yeah. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. Oh, yeah. I surrender. We surrender to you, Lord. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you for this time that we are here this morning, this time that we can gather in your name. I want to thank you that like a rushing wind, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I ask you to come and touch someone's life here this morning like a rushing wind, Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to come and touch someone's life like a river that overflows. I pray, mighty Savior, that this morning, that as we have come into this place this morning, that the Holy Spirit, we want to give you the first and foremost place and nobody else. And as I say that, Holy Spirit, I believe that you are right now can touch someone's heart and touch someone's mind and touch someone's thoughts because it's only you Holy Spirit that can do that right now and so Holy Spirit we rely on you this morning I pray that as your word goes forth this morning Holy Spirit that it might touch someone's heart here that they will never ever be the same again we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, worship team. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. Hey, I sound very loud. Derek, you know I've got a very loud voice already. So just uh, see there if we can just soften that a little bit. That would be great. And then if someone can just do me a favor and just take that speaker and just move it that side so that there's not too much frequency, hallelujah. Good morning, church. Thank you, good morning, Shane. <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. I am blessed to be in God's presence this morning. And it's always a privilege for me to be here and speak God's word. And I just want to again say thanks to Pastor Gerrit and Pastor Marlin for allowing me the opportunity to speak God's word. I hope that this morning, this word might touch your heart. I know it's a bit different because we started at 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. And, um, and I can see that, you know, even though we did 10 o'clock, most and everybody is here this morning. So hallelujah. Give yourselves a hand for being here at 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. Yeah, I also want to just say thank you to the leadership of the church, the church council, for being me in their prayers and um, for also just supporting me. And, and I know that today God's going to bless us. Hallelujah. I want to do something this morning. I want you to lift your left hand up and put your right hand on your heart. All right, are we there? I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, Bless the word to my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Because I know we started a bit late. I was tossing and turning yesterday. 
to a point where I was like, sure, I was nervous because I knew there's load shedding. Now we're starting 10. It's going to be warm in the church. Put the fans on. Do everything. I said, okay, Chad, so you can't have a long lungs. You can't have long lungs this morning. You've got to try to keep it kort en krachtig. Hallelujah. Amen. And so God has been speaking to me. And the word that I actually wanted to speak to you about this morning, I was tossing and turning about yesterday until I looked at something else that, I was, that I've done already. It's actually something that we had to prepare. It's a prepared word. And I wasn't going to use it, but God said, no, but I want you to use that prepared word. Even if some people in the congregation heard a bit of it. I want you to speak it from top to bottom and complete the word because I believe that the word is going to touch someone's heart this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready, church? Praise you, Jesus. All right, what is love? What is love? I see you there, Mr. Reddy, smiling at me. Wikipedia says this. Wikipedia says that love encompasses a range of strong and positive emotional and mental states. From the most sublime virtue or good habit, the deepest interpersonal affection, to the simplest pleasure. Aye. Most commonly, love refers to a feeling of a strong attraction and emotional attachment. And when I read that, I said, Wikipedia doesn't know who Jesus Christ is. Wikipedia doesn't know who Jesus Christ is. Because there's nothing that they say there about the love of Jesus. Emotional, no, 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 the love of Jesus. I'm going to tell you a story this morning. Is that okay? I had to get permission so I had to ask the specific person, could I speak about the story this morning? And I did get the permission. Back in 2004, I worked for Mug and Bean, Canal Walk. Know where that is? I was a waiter. I was a waiter. I was a waiter. And while waitering, there was a young lady that came there. She just finished the matric. She was looking for work. And from that day, really, I said, hey. I spotted her. And as time went on, we started working together and we got to know each other. And you must know how it goes when the sparkles and the eyes and the everything are there. You know, one thing leads to the other. Hallelujah. The problem, though, is that I'm old school. So I was taught when I was younger by my parents that if you're going to go and see a girl, you must go and introduce yourself to the parents. Now, I'm going to give you some advice. Please, please, please don't go and meet the parents on Christmas Day. <laughs> okay, even though you think it's a quiet idea, we can bring them a gift or something, don't go meet them on Christmas Day, please. Because you're not just going to meet the parents, hallelujah. The uncles, the aunties, the grandmother, the grand, they all are going to be there. I, I still had a nice, it felt like Joseph and the technical dream coat type of shirt on. So everyone was not quite Daniel Hector. Levi, Timberlands. I can still remember how I, you know, kind of, because you know, the gel, I think I put half of that pot of gel on, sister. The <laughs> And while you're sitting there slowly, you can see it start dripping down your face like that. Down the face it starts dripping. You see, we dated for a while, and then something happened that I had an opportunity to go and work out in England. And because I know myself, I thought, nah, man, I can't do long, sh long distance relationships. Neither. I need a year by me. And I thought the manly thing or the 
godly thing is not to keep someone on a on a leech, they say, Musna. Am I right? On a string. Sorry. The leech is diverge it to you. Oh, sorry, it's a string, yes, sorry. And so I chose the worst day to do something. I chose the 14th of February. What's the 14th of February? I, Lord, have mercy. I told a specific lady, this young lady, listen, I don't think it's going to be good if I go and you hear. So rather, come, we rather cut it, we call it quits, and we just be good friends. You know? But even though that person felt that she was heartbroken, I was just as heartbroken. Because I like this girl, man. Woo! Am I right, Zon? You know how it goes. Hallelujah. You see, the thing was, I became, I never then went to, to England to go and take the job. I then became one of the managers at Mug and Bean, and they promoted me from where I was to one of the managers. And I saw the salary size, so I was like, shoo, praise the Lord. For a 20, 21 year old, that's good money. I took the job. But the problem was that the same girl that I was eyeing, or that I was broken up with now, is still going to be, I'm going to see her every day. Ay, Lord. And you know us men, mm, yeti. I don't want to say it. You know we have this pride in us. So proud. Nee, but um, don't look at me, I will look at you. <laughs> so pride, the pride came in. But we still chatted, we still connected myself and her. And then, in that same year of 2005, in May, she invited me to her birthday party. Hey. And I said to the Lord that day, Lord, I'm going to this birthday party, but I'm not coming home empty-handed, hallelujah. <laughs> I went to the birthday party. You know what actually happened at the birthday party? Because she must tell me I can say everything. So I say everything. At the birthday party, her friends set her up with a blind date. And uh, I heard about this. So I thought to myself, bro, you're going to get early to the party. You're going to use a half a bottle of your cologne. You pour it to my from the top all the way down. You just wait after you bath. You soak yourself up in this cologne. I put on my best, put on my pup, 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 pup. Here's ready to go. You know, I'm in business. Came into the room. As I came into that room, you must know the smell came all around in the room there. Chad is here, baby. <laughs> and my, I think, my thinking was, before this blind date becomes alive and see this beauty, I better get the business done, Uncle Ron. Needless to say, 15 years unmarried, going for 16 years, God has been good to us. Hallelujah. Although there is something that's very funny, Valentine's Day in the Bartman house is a very funny thing. Because obviously my son's heard about this story. <laughs> and I don't, and I always still get reminded, remember what happened on Valentine's Day? Da, da, da. Yes, I know. That's why you'll always get the biggest bunch of roses. Whatever they want you want, I'll get it for you, my baby. Hallelujah. I told you the story because I, I became a bit vulnerable in front of you. And the reason I did that is because I can tell you that everyone over here has a story of something. Everyone here can tell me about a bad relationship. Everyone over here can tell me of some time where they were hurt. Someone over here can also tell me about if their parents has ever told them that they love them. Because some people might have never even heard that from their parents. Some of you might have been here and never felt a, a warm hug. That's why I try to give warm hugs to make sure that you understand and know it's not just my hug, it's the love of God's love. You see, I'm here to let you know that there is someone that loves you more than you will ever, ever understand or can think of or can imagine. You see, even though you've been hurt and disappointed, I want to tell you about this oath today. This guy... <laughs> 
He will never leave you nor will he forsake you. You see, the love of God never fails. Even though men fail, God will never fail. Hallelujah. I titled my message, The Love of God Never Fails. So let's read together quickly in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8 to 10. And when you get there, you say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you there? Just giving you some time. Praise the Lord. So verse 8 says, Love never fails. It never fades nor ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gifts of special knowledge, it will pass away. Sorry, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, for our knowledge is fragmentary and incomplete. But when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partial will pass away. Hallelujah. You see, I want to let you know that the reason the love of God can never fail us is because in 1 John 4 verse 8, the Bible says, The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Can I say that again? The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Does not and never did know Him. For God is... I can't hear you. For God is... He is the originator of love. And it is an enduring attribute of His nature. That's why I said, Wikipedia can now what for may say. They can tell me whatever. God is love. So I want to tell you this morning that God is love. That's why love can never fail. Hallelujah. It can never fail. Wherever you see love in the Bible, I always put a little uh, bracket next to it. And I put God there. And wherever I see God in the Bible, I put a little bracket around. And I put love in between. Because God is love. That's why it can never fail us. I told you I'm not going to be very long. Hallelujah. I want to leave you with two reasons why God's love will never fail. Is that okay? See, God's love can never fail because of His promises. When God makes promises, it must stay true. Because his word cannot return back to him. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 11, I know I always hover around this thought, but I like to repeat it so that we can go through it and, and you understand why I say that his promises can never fail. Because Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 11 says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, church, sorry, there's something on my lip, and it's bothering me, so my apologies. Because his word cannot return empty or void to him, his promises to us will always be fulfilled. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble in dread before them. For it is the Lord your God. I put in practice there. It is the Lord your God. It is love who goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2 verse 11 to 13 it says, 
This is a faithful and trustworthy saying. If we died with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we endure, we will also reign with Him. If we deny, listen to this, He will also deny us. If we are faithless, He remains faithful, true to His word, and his righteous character, for he cannot deny himself. His promises are new every morning. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you are, where you are, where you find yourself, the love of God will never fail you. Amen. I've got point number two. Ready? The reason why... God can never fail us. It's because of His Son, Jesus Christ. The reason why God's love can never fail us because of His Son, Jesus Christ. He gave His Son so that we can have eternal life through Him. Even though God knew that before the world began that man would sin, fail and fall, He had a plan in mind already so that man could live and be set free. Do you know why that is? Because love is a choice. Because love is a choice. And guess what? God chose you and me. Hallelujah. He chose you and me. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it says, But God clearly shows and proves His love for us by the fact that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Famous verse, John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. You see, I shared my story because I wanted to explain something. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter which way you go. If God has got a purpose and plan for you, it will happen. Irrespect of time. Irrespect of place. If it's for you, it's going to happen to you. I could have, I might have thought, hey, I'm never going to ever. I might have thought that. It was about four months that we were not apart, or that we were apart. And every day that I look upon Robin Lee Bartman, I said, Yeah, Lord, there she's walking. But little did I know the plan that God had for us. You know why that is? It's because love will never fail. What he says in his word is true. And we can believe that. So it doesn't matter what you've been through. Who's hurt you? This morning I'm here to come and bring you some hope. I want to tell you this morning that the love of God will conquer everything and every desire and every hurtful nature that you have in your heart. But you've got to do one thing though. You've got to bring it to His feet. You've got to lay it down at His feet. You've got to surrender. It's one of the songs I chose was I Surrender. Because this morning I want to ask you in the deepness of your heart that if there is unforgiveness this morning, that if there is something in your heart that you have not done, if your parents have never ever said, I love you, today is the day that I want us to phone them and say, oh, I love you. Today I want to tell you that God's love is never ending, always available. His love reaches further than you can ever think or imagine. God's love is pure. And in His love you can find rest and assurance for your tomorrow.